So today we're checking out a pretty cool accessory for the Bamboo Lab printers, specifically for the P1Ps. So as we know, the screens are pretty small and somewhat limiting, but Big Tree Tech here has us covered with the Panda Touch. So we can see this is the box it comes in. On the side here, we can see some of the features, five inch ISP display. It does communicate through Wi-Fi. You can connect multiple printers up to 10 and it's magnetically removable from its stand. On the back here, we have specifications, the size, the resolution, and it does run on a USB USB 5 volt half an amp. And there's a little picture here that shows us where to install it. Let's go ahead and open it up. And we got some soft foam, a little big tree sticker, thank you card, the manual, the screen itself feels pretty weighty. It is kind of thick. And also beside that, we got a little box with our accessories, including the little ducky. So here we have the bracket to mount it, and it actually sticks on to the printer. We get a little Allen wrench, the hardware, which are four little bolts, and a USB Type-C cord for charging the screen. So let's go ahead and open this up. And this is what it looks like. So we got a pretty large font there. It says Big Tree Tech. It is quite thick with the back plate on, which should separate. There we go, yeah, it is magnetic. So the plate has little pins that connect to the screen. And on the back of the plate, we do have the USB Type-C port for the charging. But on the back of the screen, which you guys can see all these magnets, the connectors. Here we have the power switch from off to battery powered and then to five volt DC. So if you go to battery, you're gonna use the internal battery, which you can obviously still charging whenever you want it you grab it off the back plate and it'll still run and work on the battery if you choose the 5 volts to see it'll only work off of that power and so when you take it off it should just turn off and so it won't use the battery at all and then we have this accessory 12c connector there for whatever else big tree tech has in mind for this thing and on one of the sides which is the right side here we've got a usb port to bring in files and whatnot else so the first thing we're going to want to do is grab the back plate bracket and we need to install this aluminum metal plate to it, which if we're looking at it and then the plate here, they go together like this and there's a couple screws here or bolts that will hold it together. So we'll get a bolt and get a wrench and start it here and start the other one, snug them up and as simple as that. We're installed here. And so on the printer side here on the top, this literally sits right here and it double sided sticks to this piece of plastic on the top. So yeah, probably not, you know, the best execution as far as mounting goes, but I guess this is kind of the only option we got here. So let's go ahead and connect this together. That way we can see a little better how it all lines up. And I guess we just want to be flush with the other one. Obviously you can go completely to the other side, I guess, if you wanted to. So the good part is, is that if you put it behind the screen, you got these tabs that kind of hold it when you pick it up. So maybe that's what it's for. So in any case, we'll just mount it here as this is where they want us to mount it. So it's probably a good idea to wipe this down with some alcohol before permanently sticking it. But yeah, we're just gonna peel the 3M double-sided tape. Make sure it's lined up pretty close before we commit. And then we're just gonna set it down push down on the bracket in the back so it can stick really good and i think we got it pretty close so now we should just be able to grab this thing let's see if it wants to pull it forward okay so the magnets are actually very strong and you do kind of have to grab it correctly almost like holding it with your finger in the back and prying it off not to bend this too much so it did seem like it stuck good but it's still somewhat flimsy as it is quite large but we do have this installed now so the next thing would be to run our little usb wire in the back here which i'm on another camera now you guys probably can see there is a usb power output so we can plug that in just like that and you guys can see how this is mounted here now if we go this way we can see there's a hole here and this wire with the whole plug can go through it as it's small enough and travel the other way here and plug into the back of the holder and there we go. So now we're connected with the cable so we can maybe strap them down or tuck them in. Oh, I just realized there's little clips here that the cable can clip into. So that's actually quite nice. It's almost like there were supposed to be an accessory here for this printer. Very cool. So yeah, but you do have this cable running. 
Theoretically, you could just run it behind here and then bunch them up so it'll be cleaner, but I guess this is one of the ways you can install it. So now when we put the pad on the mount, we will be charging, but let's go ahead and turn it on here in the back to the battery mode. And actually it powers on. All right, so hopefully you guys can see. I did have to turn the camera down as the screen is quite bright and to be honest, a little bit washed out looking, especially on camera. In real life, it's not as bad. It's just the contrast ratio seems to be off and it's just more bright than vivid. But in any case, here we have the startup screen. So the first thing we wanna do is connect our Wi-Fi. And that's what it's telling us here to do with a QR code here for the manual. So let's go ahead and choose our Wi-Fi. I'm gonna enter the password. So this is gonna be your local network. All right, so it's connecting. All right, so we got a little check mark saying we are connected. Click next. So this is the part where you're gonna have to enter all of your details here from the printer. So the printer's name, I'm gonna put P1P, and then you're gonna find your printer IP, access code, and serial number. So the IP and access code should be in the printer's display here, where we can find those things, probably here in the settings. All right, so we entered all of our information. Let's click confirm. And we've successfully connected, it said there on the top, and looks like we're, we're good to go. So here we're at home, we've got a little light button here, and it actually works, it turns on the light. We are connected to Wi-Fi, we've got the nozzle, the bed temperature, settings here. So let's see, maybe we can home the printer. I'll click on home, and look at that, it's moving around. Let's pull this thing off. So the first thing I want to do, and honestly, is to turn down this brightness as it's way too bright. Let's see, let's go to settings. And it doesn't look like we can adjust that anymore. Very interesting. We do have out of sleep for in five minutes. Restart. Oops. Well, I accidentally just restarted it. Oh, wow, that was a quick reboot and <laughs> connection. Wow. Okay, so that's great to see. Yeah, so here's our multi-printer connection area. So we've only got one printer connected. And you can add another one. But yeah, a little disappointed to see that we don't have any kind of controls for brightness. Maybe with the firmware update, they'll bring that in there because I feel like we really need it. So it does look like we have some kind of file here. And yeah, just our controls here. Very interesting. Well, let's go ahead and maybe preheat 200. And it starts preheating. The fans came on. And we'll do the bed at 60. Okay, so yeah, the touchscreen actually is pretty nice, very responsive, and seems to work very well. We also got filament here, and by the way, this thing is compatible with the AMS system, so we don't have any filament in there, so it's not showing us much, but yeah, guys. All right, so let's try to print something here, and I got the bed and nozzle warmed up to ABS. I put some ABS filament in. Let's see if we can extrude, and I can see it coming out. All right, so it looks like it purged. Let's move this to the side a bit and grab this burger. And I'm gonna go ahead and send a file through Wi-Fi from Bamboo Studios. All right, so it looks like there was some receiving of the file. And look at that, this screen here changed also. And this kind of says here what it's doing. If you look a little closer here, you guys can see we got a little panda there as the preview, so it doesn't show you the model. And we got the progress down here with the pause and stop, and we can control our temperatures here. So we still do have our main buttons on the side. Yeah, pretty basic stuff. It's just great that it's something you can just grab and have next to you as you're printing. Now, one thing that's kind of fortunate that would be great to have is the live view from the camera, as that would be a huge plus. You could turn it on and kind of watch it, I guess. Pretty simplistic overall, and pretty much works as a secondary screen to your smaller primary one here. And you guys can see it goes off after five minutes. If you just touch it, it comes back on. And yeah, the only difference we see now here is that we got a picture of the printer, or I guess just says P1 series. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So if you wanna adjust anything, you just click on it. You can see our progress here, the layers, and how much minutes we got left, 39. And we can pause or stop the print. So yeah, pretty basic stuff here as we're printing. And by the way, we are printing a toothpaste squeezer, which are quite useful. And you guys can see that P1P is doing a great job printing ABS.
All right, and our toothpaste squeezer is done. And we can see here it says finished. It doesn't say how much time it took, but if you click that, it just goes back to the main menu. So I did have to reprint because that comes off really easy. Print fell off as I was printing. So I added brim for these larger parts. And also I did forget to put supports underneath here, which I did that as well. And man, this thing prints out so nice in ABS. Probably is a little hard to see because it's white, but Bamboo Labs does not disappoint with print quality. Let's see how easy it is to get this support off. Just gonna push it from the bottom there. Yeah, it just comes right off. So yeah, very well calibrated in the slice, just normal. And you guys saw how easy everything comes off when it's cooled off. We got a little brim on this one. We need a peel. So because this is not the P1S, I believe, whatever, the enclosed one, this is just the open. That's not as great with ABS, but still you can see for these smaller parts, we can print it. We're gonna put this part in here and it's gonna click into the teeth. And then this piece is gonna go like this. And when you spin this, there we go. So it clicks, but it doesn't go the other way. And that's how you keep squeezing the toothpaste. So you just insert it through here through the slots and then you twist it to squeeze it out. And then this end piece here does need to be glued on at the end. It's supposed to kind of click in, which it does. I end up gluing mine usually so it doesn't fall off, but yeah. Very easy here for the P1P with the Panda Touch as our new little touch screen display. And it appears that we changed back to the other menu. So yeah, overall guys, I would say that this is definitely something not necessary, but it's kind of like a nice little addition. And to be completely honest, I probably would not recommend this display unless you're just sold on the idea of, you know, wanting a touchscreen display with some kind of interaction instead of clicking these buttons and obviously grabbing it and walking away with it is nice and being able to con still control the printer. But with not too much extra features, especially with just one printer, it doesn't really make too much sense. As you can do most things from your phone or the computer, including the live view from the camera, which this thing doesn't support at the moment. Now, if you do have multiple printers, I feel like this could be very useful because you can control multiple ones from just one display. So that makes it quite compelling then. And also if a USB drive is important to you, then this could also be a plus. And as we saw earlier, you can switch between battery and just straight power through these pins on the dock. And also we have some kind of 12C accessory there. But I guess the most least compelling part about the whole Panda Touch is that there is some uncertainty to the compatibility for the future. As Bamboo Lab updates their firmware, the Panda Touch will have to keep up with it and be updated also. So there is a chance that this thing might become obsolete as the printer continues to update. But keeping that in mind, it's still a pretty fun, useful addition and adds a little bit of premium connectivity to the P1 series printers. So if you are interested in the Panda Touch, I'm going to have some links in the description. Check it out. And if you did enjoy this video, then hit that like button. And if you enjoy videos like this, stay tuned for more as we got a lot more interesting stuff coming up. And also check out the 3D printing playlist. I'm sure you'll find something interesting there. So as always, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.